Greetings. Indiana's contribution to the Civil War was invaluable as the state furnished the second most number of troops per capita to the Union cause. The state furnished 26 artillery regiments to the war effort. This episode relates the histories of regiments 1 through 13. The first independent battery, Indiana Light Artillery. The first independent battery, Indiana Light Artillery, was initially organized in Evansville, Vandenberg County, on August 5, 1861, and mustered in at Indianapolis on August 16, 1861, with Captain Martin Klaus in command. Initially known as the 21st Indiana Infantry, the regiment deployed to St. Louis, Missouri, and operated mainly west of the Mississippi River during most of the war. It saw action in Missouri, Arkansas, and participated in the Siege of Vicksburg from May the 18th through July the 4th, 1863. The regiment fought at many fierce battles, including the Battle of Thompson Hill, Port Gibson, Battle of Champion Hill, Big Black River, and the campaign against Mobile, Alabama. The 1st Indiana Heavy Artillery Regiment, or so-called Jackass Regiment, this regiment consisted of companies from every corner of Indiana. Formed as the 21st Indiana Infantry in Indianapolis, it later became the 1st Indiana Heavy Artillery Regiment. The regiment mustered into service on July the 24th, 1861, with Colonel James W. McMillan in command. The name derives from the fact that the regiment used hundreds of mules, or jackasses, to pull its train of cannon. This was the first artillery regiment from Indiana that the Army certified ready for battle. The regiment traveled to Baltimore, Maryland to join General Henry Hayes Lockwood for action on Virginia's eastern coast. They boarded Union gunboats and sailed from Newport News, Virginia on February the 23rd, 1862. Their mission was to assist in the capture of Forts St. Philip and Jackson on the mouth of the Mississippi River. Fort Jackson was on the west bank, Fort Philip on the east. A portion of the regiment landed on the east of Fort Philip and took the fort. This action played a key role in taking New Orleans. The other portion of the regiment loaded in New Orleans. The regiment remained in camp in Algiers, New Orleans on the south side, where it managed to capture several Confederate steamers. It participated in several actions in Louisiana until February 1863, when the regiment was transferred to artillery service, receiving a designation as the 1st Indiana Heavy Artillery Regiment. This regiment continued fighting in Louisiana until 1864, when it moved against Confederate positions during the Texas Red River Campaign. The regiment mustered out on January 13, 1866, suffering 392 dead, 228 desertions, and 200 missing in action. The second independent battery, Indiana Light Artillery. The battery was composed mainly of men from Ohio County. Organized in Indianapolis and mustered in as the second independent battery, Indiana Light Artillery, under the command of David G. Rabb. The unit served for Mont's Army in the West, in the Western Theater of Missouri, Arkansas, and the Indian Territory. The unit returned to Indiana for the reorganiza for reorganization on September the 14th. 1864. The non-veteran members were mustered out at this time, and the regiment was assigned to garrison duty in Nashville, Tennessee. The unit fought at the December 15th through 16th, 1864 Battle of Nashville. The regiment returned to Indiana and mustered out on July the 3rd, 1865. The unit suffered 28 killed during its service. One officer and 13 enlisted men died in battle. 14 men died of a disease. The unit participated in Blount's 1861 campaign, capture of Fort Davis in 1861, and various other actions in the West. The 3rd Independent Indiana Light Artillery Battery, unit organized for a three-year term at Connersville, Indiana, and mustered in at Indianapolis on August 24, 1861, under the command of Captain Watton G. Freiberger, Freibarger. The unit was attached to Fremont's Army of the West, serving mainly in Missouri during the remainder of 1861 and well into 1862. After re-enlisting on November 30, 1863, the unit moved to Kentucky to participate in Smith's campaign. From there, it moved to Pittsburgh, Mississippi to take part in the Meridian Campaign and the Red River Campaign. It fought at the Battle of Nashville, after which the unit took part in the pursuit of Confederate General Hood. The unit took 
part in various actions in Louisiana and Alabama, after which it returned to Indiana to muster out on August the 21st, 1865. The third independent battery, Indiana Light Artillery, suffered 29 casualties during its service, with one officer and 10 enlisted men killed in action and 18 of disease. The 4th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, was active mostly in Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee during the course of the war. The unit organized in Indianapolis on September the 30th, 1861, after which it traveled to Louisville, Kentucky. Attached to the Army of the Ohio, the regiment participated in the Siege of Corinth and Buell's campaign as General Don Carlos Buell pursued Confederate General Braxton, Braxton Bragg through Kentucky. Major actions occurred during the Middle Tennessee Campaign, the Battle of Chickamauga, and the Siege of Chattanooga. The unit reorganized on October the 6th, 1864, and went to Nashville, Tennessee to participate in the Battle of Nashville on December the 14th through the 16th, 1864. In mid-1865, the unit was assigned to garrison duty in various places in Tennessee before returning to Indianapolis to muster out on August 1, 1865. During the course of its service, the 4th Independent Indiana Light Artillery suffered 28 casualties. Twelve enlisted men and one officer either died in action or were wounded. Fifteen men died of disease. 5th Independent Battery I Indiana Light Artillery, the men in this unit came from La Porte, Whitley, Noble, and Allen Counties. The 5th Independent Battery Light Artillery, organized in Indianapolis and mustered into service on November the 22nd, 1861, with Captain Peter Simmons, Simmonson in command. After traveling to Louisville, the unit performed most of its service in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia. The unit's major actions included the capture of Huntsville, Alabama on April the 11th, 1862, the pursuit of General Braxton Bragg, August 31st through September the 26th, the Battle of Perryville, Kentucky on October the 8th, 1862, Battle of Stones River, December the 30th through the 31st, 1862, and January the 1st through the 3rd, 1863. They fought at the Battle of Chickamauga, September the 19th through the 20th in 1863, and at the Battle of Rizcaca on May the 14th and 15th, 1864. They participated in the Siege of Atlanta that lasted from July the 22nd until August the 25th, 1864. The unit mustered out of service on November the 26th, 1864. The 5th Indi Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery suffered a total of 36 casualties, 11 enlisted men and one officer killed in action, 24 died of disease. The 6th Indiana, the 6th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery uh, it organized at Evansville and mustered into service on September the 7th, 1861, at on Indianapolis under the command of Frederick Bear. The bulk of the unit service was in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Mississippi. After mustering into service, it traveled to Henderson, Kentucky, attached to the District of Paducah. It would later be attached to the Army of the Tennessee District of Memphis, the 17th, 15th, and 16th Army Corps. Late in the war, it was attached to the District of West Tennessee and the Artillery Reserve District of Western Tennessee. Major actions included the Battle of Shiloh, April the 6th and 7th, 1862, the Siege of Corinth, Mississippi from April the 29th through the May 30th, 1862, Grant Central Mississippi Campaign from November the 26th, 1862 through January the 10th, 1863. They also participated in the Siege of Vicksburg from June the 12th through July the 4th, 1863. They uh, accompanied Smith's expedition to Oxford, Mississippi, August the 1st to August the 30th, 1864. They had garrison duty at Memphis, Tennessee from September the 1864 until mustering out on July the 22nd, 1865. The 6th Independent Indiana Battery Light Artillery suffered 17 casualties, one officer and Enlisted men killed in action, 15 to disease. The 7th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery. Uh, the residence of the soldiers that served in this battery is not listed on the roster. The 7th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, mustered into service on December the 2nd, 1861. It traveled to Louisville, Kentucky, where it joined the Army of the Ohio. It would later be attached to the Army of the Cumberland, 14th Army Corps, and the District of East Tennessee Department of Cumberland. 
The bulk of its service was in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia. Major actions during the war included the Battle of Shiloh, Tennessee from April the 20th, April 6th through the 7th, 1862, Buell's campaign in North Alabama and Middle Tennessee from June through August, 1862, Battle of Stones River on December the 30th and 31st, 1862, Battle of Chickamauga, September the 19th and 20th, the Siege of Chattanooga, Tennessee, September the 24th through the November 23rd, the Lookout Mountain campaign, 20, the Battle of Lookout Mountain, November the 23rd and 24th, 1862, the Siege of Atlanta that lasted from July the 22nd eight, through August the 25th, 1864. They fought at the Battle of Jonesboro, August the 31st, September the 1st, 1864. The 7th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery performed guard duty from September 1864 until mustering out on July the 20th, 1865. The 7th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery suffered 29 casualties, one officer and six, en men, six enlisted men killed in action, and 22 enlisted men died of disease. The 8th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery, the unit organized in Indianapolis and mustered into service on December the 13th, 1861, with George T. Cochran in command. The battery consisted mostly of men from Vandenberg County. On, July, on January the 25th, 1862, the unit traveled to Louisville, Kentucky, where it joined the Artillery, 4th Division, Army of the Ohio. It would also be attached to the 14th Army Corps, the Army of the Cumberland, 2nd Division, Artillery Reserve Department of the Cumberland. It concluded the war serving garrison duty at Chattanooga, Tennessee. The, the regiment operated mainly in Tennessee and Kentucky during the course of the war. The major actions included the 1862 Battle of Shiloh, Buell's campaign in northern Alabama and Middle Tennessee, the Battle of Perryville, the Battle of Chickamauga, the Siege of Chattanooga, and most of the members mustered out of service on January the 25th, 1865. However, some remained to join the 7th Indiana Battery. The 8th Indiana Battery, Indiana Light Artillery, suffered 15 casualties during the war five killed in action, and ten to disease. Ninth Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery organized in Indianapolis on, and mustered into service on December the 20th, 1861, with Captain Noah S. Thompson in command. The unit moved to Cairo, Illinois, where it became attached to the military district of Cairo. During the course of the war, it would be part of the Army of the Tennessee Artillery, 1st Division, District of Jackson, Tennessee, the 4th Division, 17th Army Corps, and the 4th Division, 16th Army Corps. It was attached to other armies at, at various times. At war's end, it was attached to the 1st Brigade, 2nd Division, Army of the Tennessee. The battery oper operated mainly in Tennessee and Mississippi. However, it did penetrate into Missouri late in the war. Major operations included Grant's 1862 Central Mississippi Campaign, the Red River Campaign in 1863, Nashville Campaign, December the 15th and 16th, 1864, Pursuit of Hood to the Tennessee River from December the 17th through the 28th, 1865. The unit was, was involved in many other actions during the war. On January the 25th, 1865, it was ordered to return to Indiana. During the journey home on the steamship Ellipse, Eclipse, the boiler exploded on January the 27th, 1865, near Johnsonville, Tennessee. Only 10 soldiers of the 70-man battery escaped unharmed. The 8th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery mustered out of service in Indianapolis on June the 25th, 1865. During the course of the war, the unit suffered 61 casualties, 61 killed, 6, six killed in battle, and 55 enlisted men to disease. The 10th Independent Battery Indiana Light Artillery. Most of these, most of the men in this battery came from Tippecanoe County, specifically Lafayette. It organized in Indianapolis and received orders to move to Louisville, Kentucky, after mustering in on just January the 25th, 1862, with Jerome B. Cox in command. It joined the 4th Division, Army of the Ohio, during most of its service. It would be attached to the Army of the Cumberland. Major operations, it, it participated in the March of Savannah from March the 17th through April the 8th, 1862. They played a reserve role in the Battle of Shiloh on April the 6th and the 7th, 1862. 
They fought at the Battle of Perryville, October the 1st through the 22nd, the Battle of Stones River from December the 30th and 31st, 1862. They uh, was in the Chatt They were involved in the Chickamauga campaign from August the 16th through September the 22nd, 1863, the Battle of Lookout Mountain on November the 24th, 1863, Missionary Ridge, November the 25th, 1863. They did garrison duty at, at Chattanooga until March the 25th, 1864, when it was split into one group that joined the 5th and 18th Indiana Batteries and another that served on the gunboat Stone River. The unit reunited to serve at Huntsville, Alabama. The regiment traveled to Indianapolis and mustered out on July the 10th, 1865. The battery suffered 27 casualties, 5 killed in battle, and 22 to disease. The 11th Indi Independent Battery Light Artillery. Most of the soldiers and officers in this battery came from Allen County, with some from Vigo and Marion Counties. After organizing and mustering at Indianapolis on December the 17th, 1861, the battery moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where it served unattached as a reserve battery with the Army of the Ohio. In November 1862, it joined the Army of the Cumberland, where it was to be attached, where it was to be attached for the remainder of the war. Captain Arnold Sudermeister served as commander of the battery. The major activities included the March of Savannah, February the 10th through the 25th, 1862, Buell's campaign in northern Alabama and middle Tennessee from June through August, 1862, the Battle of Chickamauga, the Siege of Chattanooga, and the Battles of Chattanooga, as well as the Battle of Riscaca on May the 4th through the 15th, 1864. They fought at the Battle of Jonesboro from August the 31st to September the 1st, 1864 disbanded and joined with the 18th Indiana Battery on November the 21st, 1864. The battery suffered 25 casualties, six killed in battle, the remainder to disease. The 11th Indi Independent Battery Light Artillery organized and mustered at Indianapolis on December the 17th, 1861. The battery then moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where it served unattached as a reserve battery with the Army of the Ohio. In November 1862, it joined the Army of the Cumberland, where it was to be attached for most of the remainder of the war. Other major activities included the March to Savannah from in February of 1862, Buell's campaign in northern Alabama from June to August of 1862, the Battle of Chickamauga, the Siege of Chattanooga, Battles of Chattanooga, the Battle of Rescaca, the Battle of Jonesboro, disbanded and joined with the 18th Indiana Battery on November the 21st, 1864. The battery suffered 25 casualties, six killed in battle, the remainder to disease. The 12th Independent Battery, Indiana Light Artillery. The men that served in this battery came mostly from Clark County, though there were some from Jefferson, Grant, and Franklin counties. Organized in Indianapolis and mustered on February the 26th, 1862, the battery moved to Louisville, Kentucky. The 12th Independent Indiana Light Artillery served in the Army of the Ohio and the Department of the Cumberland, operating mostly in Kentucky and Tennessee. Major actions included served as a cavalry unit from February 1862. It participated in action involving Conf Confederate John Morgan's raid in Kentucky in July 1862. It was at the Siege of Munfordville from September the 14th through the 17th, 1862. The remainder of the war, they had garrison duty at Chattanooga, Tennessee. The battery mustered out on July the 10th, 1865. The 12th Independent Light Artillery suffered 26 casualties, 19 by disease, and 7 killed in action. Next episode will cover Artillery Regiments 14 through 26th. Find out more about Indiana's role in the Civil War by purchasing my book. You will find it on the website www.mossyfeetbook.com on the Indiana Short History Series category. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. You may choose to purchase the book in ebook or softbound versions. An audiobook version is also available on Google Play. At the conclusion of this podcast series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, as well as many other audiobook sellers. You can listen to this podcast on many platforms, including Apple, TuneIn, Spotify, Amazon Music, and many others. Video versions are available on YouTube and Rumble. 
Southeast Indiana residents can also find my books at the Walnut Street Variety Shop at 111 George Street in Batesville, Indiana. You can also order these books direct from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign the book, just send an email to mossyfeetbooks at, at mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed book and instruction on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners to this podcast that want email notifications of my new releases can just send an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you will find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And-